All right, everybody, welcome back to the office. So I want to do these clips specifically for the Digital Asset News Clips channel. I don't put uh, as much work into it as I should uh, because it is, it is uh, the channel that we just dice up on the primary channel, which is just Digital Asset News. So I figured that um, the best thing I could do is just create a couple of extra videos uh, per day that are just specialized for the damn clips. And uh, I think the best thing I could do is just answer some more questions and maybe go over a couple of more interesting topics. So what I want to do today is there was a question that was sent to me. This is from Chase. Chase, that's a good name, Chase. And uh, it's, it's a pretty lofty question. And he talks about, he's, well, he just states this. He says, hello, Dan, a relatively new subscriber. I've been, been watching videos ever since. I started using Celsius and Voyager per your recommendation. And if you don't know, uh, I have a one-two punch for cryptocurrency digital assets as far as like buying and uh, to gain the uh, APY. And what I do is I usually buy things through Voyager because it's super simple. It's very easy. The rates are, uh, it's, it's a commission free as they call it. And then what I do is I transfer it over to Celsius because the APY of the interest is pretty high. And I believe heavily in the Celsius project and especially Alex Mashinsky, who is the CEO. So uh, with that, for um, if you ever want to actually take a look at Celsius and Voyager, you can go right to Celsius and Voyager and you can sign up, no big deal. Also, uh, in the description of every one of my videos, there is a link and it looks just like this and allows you to go to my uh, exchanges and wallet information Google spreadsheet. And I have everything on there uh, from Coinbase to Celsius and Voyager to Uniswap to eToro and what I recommend. Uh, newsflash, I don't recommend eToro. But it, it goes over all the different um, fees and the structure and what you can get and everything you really want to know uh, as far as all these exchanges and wallets that I've actually used or I'm currently using. So uh, go ahead and check that out. But So he says, Celsius and Voyager per your recommendation after doing my own research, of course. And I've had a flawless experience so far. Uh, I've been mainly using Celsius because of the great interest rates I can earn on stable coins like USDC. I've been using the wallet as my basic savings account, earning interest like 11.55% this week instead of the bank's whopping 0 0.045. So a couple of things to unpack here. First of all, uh, I'm jealous because I am in Texas and I don't have that ability to uh, stake or to gain interest on my USDC or any kind of stable coins because that's just how it is. I don't understand why, but uh, that's where we're at. I actually uh, interviewed Alex Mashinsky a couple, of, actually yesterday, today's Thursday, it was yesterday. And, um, you know, I talked to him about that uh, off camera and he said, hey, we're working on it. You know, these are the laws and whatnot. I'm like, well, that sucks. That didn't really help me too much, but whatever. Uh, but he gave me some, some good insight. He said, if you uh, have, if you incorporate or have an LLC, in other states, then you can do that route. But uh, of course, I have incorporated my businesses in Texas where I live, so what are you gonna do? So anyhow, so th there is that, uh, I'm very jealous. And uh, I will just say that at some point, I would like to be able to do that because the second thing is, is as soon as Celsius opens all that up and they say that you can you know, gain interest on, your, on these stable coins, uh, I will definitely take uh, the money that is sitting in my banks for my other three businesses, and I will stick the majority, now oh, maybe about 50%, into Celsius. And if you don't know right now, uh, I've taken out of all my holdings for cryptocurrency, and I've been accumulating, I've been dollar cost averaging since 2017, uh, I have put 25% of all of my holdings into Celsius. That is how much I believe in that project, and it's how much I trust it. So uh, go ahead and take a look. So the question, finally, if I get to it, my only question I have with holding stable coins is the news regarding the buying power of USD, which is a pretty good question. Um, inflation rates, et cetera. How do you see this playing out in the long term? I realize my rates are higher than the inflation rate because the inflation rate is typically around 2%, which you know isn't too bad, which I never understood the whole thing about a savings account because if you put money in a savings account, you're essentially just losing money year after year. So why would you do that? Um, I realize my rates are higher than the inflation rate, but do you see a better way of holding stable money in crypto? My portfolio consists of about 80% Bitcoin and the rest in alt. I treat my USDC holdings completely separate 
any thoughts, comments, concerns. So here's the thing. There's a wide variety of people and their beliefs. There is one side that says you should just take all your money and put it all in cryptocurrency because money is trash and it's not going to be worth anything. And there's another other side that's like, you know what, don't do that because it's very risky. And this, people are somewhere in the middle. I personally think of it like this. It all depends on who you are and what's going on in your life at this particular moment. So if you're younger, you know, you're in your 20s and uh, you have no kids, you have no real responsibilities going on, you can afford to take risks. It's like Elon Musk says. He, he gave a commencement speech. I forgot the college, but he said, look, uh, right now is the time to take risks. You don't want to wait until you, you know, you are established in, the, in your community and you got like two or three kids and then you got a mortgage and you got all these different things going on. That's not the time to take a bunch of risks. I mean, you can, but he essentially says when you're younger, take risks. So if you are on the younger side, I'm not going to give you financial advice. Let me just put it like this. If it's Rob, 20-year-old Rob, 22-year-old Rob, and uh, he just got out of the military, uh, he served his active duty, and uh, he hasn't been called up again. What I would do is I would put the bulk of my cash into cryptocurrency and just let it ride and see what happens. Because I'm young enough, I can take a hit. If, if I feel like, you know what, this cryptocurrency is just going to go to zero, it's not a big deal to me because I'm young and I can make it up. Now, moving forward, let's say you're in your 30s and you got a kid, maybe a couple kids, mortgage, all those things. Now you don't want to spend at, or take as many risks. Maybe you do a smaller percentage and then, you know, just kind of go up from there. Now, see, now Rob, who is in his 40s, is thinking to himself, you know what? Uh, I'm not in the business of losing money. That's not my game plan. My game plan is to put things into assets that will appreciate. And uh, one of those could potentially be cryptocurrencies. But uh, maybe I want to do a little bit uh, more stability, like Bitcoin, which is the most, one of the most stabler, uh, stablest ones of cryptocurrencies besides the stable coins, of course. So maybe I would want to put a little bit more into uh, Bitcoin and go on from there. So to, to answer your question right now, what I am doing, because this is what works for me, is I have uh, my coins or my uh, portfolio. I have the majority in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, that is just my portfolio. On my checking account, I have money because even though people will say that, you know, money's going to zero and money is trash. Well, guess what? The last time I checked, uh, when I go to Wells Fargo to pay my mortgage payment, they're not, che they're not taking Bitcoin and they're not taking XRP and they're not taking DOT. They're taking cash. So you have to understand that um, if you're going to keep it into cryptocurrency, just be aware that it could fluctuate wildly. So the time that you need your coins, like if you're younger, you don't need that money right now, so just let it ride. But it, as you get older, there's things that come up. There's issues that, that happen. There's health issues. There's uh, you know different things that you want to take it out that you can't because maybe the market just takes a huge hit and you're like, well, shoot, I just lost 40% last month. And that's huge. So that's not, uh, that's not for me. Moving into the whole question about uh, stable coins. Um, and then is, it go, is the dollar going to lose um, appreciation or purchasing power? Take a look at this, at this diagram. This is a diagram of the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar uh, going back all the way into the early 1900s until today. Your grandparents said, and rightfully so, that they could buy a car for a nickel or whatever it was. And you can just see it right here on this graph that uh, that is essentially, I mean, not the total truth, it's a little exaggeration, but you know what I mean. The purchasing power of the U.S. dollar has dropped over 90% since the early 1900s. So it will continue to drop, especially with what is going on with quantitative easing, the different issues globally, the different issues with China and Russia as they try to get off of the world reserve currency and dump the U.S. dollar. So the dollar is only going to go down. However, the thing about the U.S. dollar is that that is what you are actually paying for or actually can pay your bills and your mortgage and everything else. So to me, I would just say to be cautious, but to, I personally would put uh, a good amount in my cryptocurrency and digital asset portfolio. And then what I wanna do is I wanna gain the interest rate, so I will take it and I will put it into Celsius. And that's where I get that 25%. So 
Um, just be aware that, of course, the purchasing power of the dollar will decrease. But until your mortgage company and the electricity company and the water bill uh, start to say, hey, you know what? Go ahead and uh, pay us in Tron. It's in the dollar. So that's what I have. And uh, that's it for today. So uh, if you like the types of videos, there's going to be two months going to pop up on your left and right. Not for sure because YouTube kind of controls that whole action. But uh, that is it for today, and that's the special clip for Dan Clips. And uh, I want to say thanks so much for subscribing to this secondary channel. Remember, uh, YouTube likes to shut down crypto channels all the time. And uh, who knows, I could be next. And that's why we have this second channel on top of the fact that we can save a lot of you guys some time of just watching the clips. All right, thanks so much. See you on the next one.